The vibhuti or opulences offered by Maya are of many varieties. We have experience of different varieties of material enjoyment even on this planet. But if one is able to promote himself to higher planets like Chandra Loka, the sun, or still higher Mahar Loka, Jana Loka and Tapa Loka, or even ultimately the highest planet which is inhabited by Brahma and is called Satya Loka, there are immense possibilities for material enjoyment. For example, the duration of life on higher planets is far, far greater than on this planet. It is said that on moon the duration of life is such that our six months are equal to one day. We cannot even imagine the duration of life on the highest planet. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that Brahma's 12 hours are inconceivable even to our mathematicians. These are all descriptions of the external energy of the Lord or Maya. Besides these, there are other opulences which the yogis can achieve by their mystic power. They are all material. A devotee does not aspire for all these material pleasures, although they are available to him simply by wishing. By the grace of the Lord, a devotee can achieve wonderful success simply by willing, but a real devotee does not like that. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught that one should not desire material opulence or material reputation, nor should one try to enjoy material beauty. One should simply aspire to be absorbed in the transcendental service of the Lord, even if one does not get liberation but has to continue the process of birth and death unlimitedly. Actually, however, to one who engages in Krishna consciousness, liberation is already guaranteed. Devotees enjoy all the benefits of the higher planets and the Vaikuntha planets also. It is especially mentioned here, Bhagavatim Bhadram. In the Vaikuntha planets, everything is eternally peaceful, yet a pure devotee does not even aspire to be promoted there. But still he gets the advantage. He enjoys all the facilities of material and spiritual world, even during the present lifespan. Thus, because he is completely absorbed in thought of me, the devotee does not desire even the highest benediction obtainable in the upper planetary system, including Satyaloka. So, Prabhupada in the purport mentions that the vibhuti or opulences offered by Maya are of many varieties. So, in the spiritual world, there is spiritual beauty, there is spiritual opulence, there is spiritual variegatedness. And Jiva, who has rebelled against the Lord, who wants to enjoy independent of the Lord, be an independent enjoyer, this material world is created. And to facilitate his desire to enjoy material pleasures, the Lord very mercifully has created many variegatedness, material variegatedness. Prabhupada here says, offered by Maya are of many varieties. It is said that in earlier times, <clears throat> in that sense, there were limited options for people to enjoy materially, at least in this planet Earth. This universe is huge. Prabhupada says there are higher planets, Mahar Loka, Jana Loka, Tapa Loka. There were limited options as far as television is concerned, limited options as far as what you can hear. When I joined, if you have to hear some kirtans, there were audio cassettes. Prabhupada lectures, there was a box with six Prabhupada audio cassettes from Bhaktivedanta archives. A side, B side, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. And many times the tape will get <laughs> intertwined. And So, material advancement means increasing the variegatedness, increasing the opportunities to enjoy materially. And the living entity gets trapped enjoying this variegatedness. If he gets bored with 
one type of happiness the maya is already ready with another option okay try this why not try this why not try this if you're bored with india why not singapore if bored with singapore that's why these days because of travel people are traveling all over the world vacations So what Maya has done is our focus which was supposed to be on the Lord, thinking about the Lord, immersed in thoughts of the Lord, the Lord has taken those, that attention from the Lord, our thought of the Lord and taken that energy and put it on unlimited variegatedness. Because for many, many lifetimes we have dabbled in different forms of material variegatedness. That's why even during chanting time when we want to focus the mind on the Lord, on the Holy Name, we find very difficult. By default, mind thinks of something material. In our case, maybe not material, maybe thinking of service, but to bring it back on the Lord, to focus on the Lord, to think of the Lord, to absorb our mind on the Holy Name, it's a big challenge. Because Maya has, for many, many lifetimes, taken that attention energy, Mother Prabhu says, attention energy, and put it on this material variegatedness. And there is no limit to that. We have experience of different varieties of material enjoyment even on this planet. But if one is able to promote himself to higher planets like Chandraloka, the standard of happiness is even higher. And what Maya is doing is basically act, is an agent of the Lord. If we want to enjoy independent of the Lord, there are various options available so that we don't go and disturb the Lord. So if we pass one test, there's a next test ready. If we pass that test, next test is ready. Higher and higher form of enjoyment. Subtler and subtler form of traps. Only when the living entity comes to a state, Anya Abhilashita Shunya, there is no other Abhilasha, there is no other desire. He has finished is exhausted all hopes that some form of material variegatedness will give him pleasure. Till that time he is trapped in this material world. And in Kali Yuga it is all the more difficult because as I said Maya is you know unlimited ways in which a living entity can enjoy his senses. These days you have televisions with 600 channels, 700 channels. What sports you want to see? What game you want to see? And now with Geo and all that, earlier, you know, you missed a match. At best you would call your friend and say, please record that match for me. Please record that serial for me. Now, any serial, any match, any time for the last six months, one year is played, it's at your fingertips. And a living entity who has inclination to enjoy materially, huge options are now available. For example, the duration now in higher planets, this is about material, this uh, earthly planet. Now in higher planets, there are apsaras, there are, you know, the standard of living is much higher. The duration of life is much higher. Here, 20, 30 years, you know, the skin starts wrinkling, eyesight starts becoming weak, the senses become weak. Even if we want to enjoy, you know, we have limited time. Imagine in other lokas, the duration of life is the standard of enjoyment is higher. The subtle forms of enjoyment and the duration is very, very long. Prabhupada says we cannot even imagine the duration of life on the higher planet. All these are descriptions of the external energy of the Lord or Maya. So we should understand that 
we have a very big project. In fact, Prabhupada says it's a war against Maya. Maya on the other side is tempting us with various forms of material pleasures and on one side is the real pleasure that is Krishna, Krishna's beauty, attraction to Krishna, thinking of Krishna. Our natural inclination is towards material energy. If we get fed up with one kind of enjoyment, there is promise of another kind of very good. Another kind of very another kind of very good. That's why even when we come to Krishna consciousness, at, at times we feel frustrated. Why I am getting attracted? Theoretically we all know. But because it has become a habitual response, moment we see a sense object, there is a habitual response. So that's why they said, Utsaha, Dhairya and Nishchad, we have to practice the principles of Krishna consciousness with enthusiasm, with patience and with determination. Generally when we enjoy material pleasures or become achieve material opulence, become materially well situated, again that is another trap of Maya. We can feel that now I am in control. We can start feeling that now I am safe. Bhagavatam therefore says, Deha apta kalatra dishu atma saineshu asatswapi. Again, it's a trap of Maya when we are surrounded by a lot of wealth, family members who are very supportive, good bank balance, a lot of insurance policies one gets a sense that, you know, I am safe now. So Bhagavatam says that it's an asatswapi, asatswapi, it's not a fact. The security is not real. Tesham pramata nidhanam pashyana pina pashyati. Although one sees that this is not real security. We have example of, you know, recently Mrs. Jayalalita, Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. She was in the hospital, attended to be the best doctors. Eighteen doctors, specialists were monitoring round the clock various parameters. The best of doctors in the world were consulted. The doctors from Ames were flown in. The best medical facilities were at the disposal. But then, Asat Swapi. So, Pramatta, we get maddened. That is the beauty of Maya. It covers our real knowledge. And how do we come out of Maya? How do we come out of illusion? Krishna says, it's my divine energy. Daiviyesha gunamai mama maya dhuratteya. It's not easy to break this illusion. Even learned men, even intellectuals, even big, big politicians, even scholars, philosophers, they are in the trap. By the mercy of the Lord, Maam evaya prapadyante, Mayam etam tarantite. Even we, although not pure, even just we have begun our devotional service, somehow we are able to see the scam, we are able to see the traps. Although still inclinations are there for material pleasure, at least theoretically we know what's the truth, what's the reality. So that's the mercy of the Lord and if we follow the footsteps of great acharyas, follow their teachings diligently, then we can be completely out of this trap. We can be very rightly situated, just like here it says, completely absorbed in thought of me and then the devotee does not desire any material happiness, any material benediction. He just wants association of Lord, just want to engage in service of the Lord. One time there was a frog, <clears throat> he was living with other frogs, his family and other frogs, other community of frogs, by the side of a river. And these frogs were facing a big problem. 
and the problem was this elephants they would come herds of elephants would come to drink water or take bath in that river and when they would come you can imagine elephants so big so huge and when they would come they would not see here there they just keep walking towards the river and all the frogs you know at times they were caught unaware and they would get trampled under the feet of elephants they would try to save their lives but there were so many elephants that you know they would get crushed so one day this frog was sitting by the side of this river and he said we have to do something and that day somebody had come to take bath and generally people when they come take bath you no know, offer some flowers to the river or put some money so the frog happened to get a 50 paisa coin which was lying by the side of the river somebody had offered so he took that coin and said he started thinking looks like i am the richest frog in the world after all which frog will have 50 paisa <laughs> i am the richest frog and then he put the coin on the ground and majestically sat on the on the coin and said i am the richest frog you know with lot of pride lot of ego i am the richest frog now i am the richest frog and then he started because i am the richest frog i should do something for my community for other frogs they have been harassed by these elephants and now i will do something for my community to solve once and for all the problems what they are facing so one fine day is sitting on the coin very confidently thinking he is the richest frog he has to serve his brethren and there he sees from a distance elephants approaching the river so from a distance he says stop stop so elephants where do they notice <laughs> small frog sitting in some corner he says stop i the richest frog order the elephants don't move any further the elephants kept moving towards the water kept moving towards the water he says don't you know who i am and the richest frog i am ordering stop not one step you should take more the elephants kept moving kept moving kept moving and this is no you cannot do it i am ordering i the richest frog am ordering you cannot come towards the river and by that time elephants had approached and tap on us and the richest frog is over this is exactly although this is a figurative story it looks quite how can a frog claim like this is exactly what happens when somebody becomes very opulent he thinks that he is in control he thinks that suhidam sarva bhuta naam i am the well wisher of my community my society my country the world at large i can help people krishna says suhidam sarva bhuta naam gyatva maam shantim rachati many times so called philanthropists they they want to help others thinking that taking the position of the lord although yes doing good to others is 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 very nice but not with the understanding that karta ham iti manyate i am the lord i am the well wisher i am the doer i will help my brethren that is another trap of maya sometime people ask should we do some kind of a social work should we help somebody who is in need should we feed a person who is hungry yes our idea is some spiritual element has to be added if you have to feed yes we can feed prasadam but another important thing is with what consciousness we are helping if we are helping that i am the well wisher i am really the one who can help him that's a wrong understanding we may even help a person but with the understanding that he is amsha of the lord i am amsha of the lord on behalf of the lord i am helping him so in as devotees many time we can get positions we can get power we can get fame we can get adoration and we have to be very very cautious it says power corrupts 
We have examples of many devotees also who sometimes were given services which required lot of control, lot of power, lot of position, lot of fame and Maya trapped them. So devotee always should take a humble position, O oh Lord, wherever I may be, let me be just be situated humbly the shelter of your lotus feet. Wherever I take birth in this life or any other life, let me have just one benediction. Let me be engaged in your loving devotional service. In this life or any other life, wherever I may take birth, let me be always be in association of your devotees. Any other desire we have, it's a trap. That's why pure devotional service, it said, Anya Abhilashita Shunya. So we should little bit be introspective. No doubt, suddenly we cannot become pure, suddenly we cannot become full of prideless, ego, annihilate the ego, but then at least we know these are the anarthas. They say the bottommost stage is unconscious incompetence. At least theoretically we should know conscious incompetence. We know that I am having material desires. We know that I am lusty. We know that I still have hopes that I can find pleasure and I am not able to control those things. That will make a devotee, he will not think that, you know, I am great, I am senior, I am this. He will be properly situated knowing that I have so many anarthas. I have a long way to go. Gramya that says, Gramya kahe pandita. People are claiming that I am a big pandita. But what a fallen person I am. At least devotee should internally believe that. I am the most fallen. The Acharyas were not saying out of just, just to you know, depict or demonstrate their humility. They actually believed it. They believe, just like Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is saying that I am more fallen than Jagai and Madai. So here it is said that devotees do not, they are just absorbed in thoughts of the Lord. They don't want to enjoy material pleasures. They are not looking for heavenly pleasures. They are not even looking for going back to Godhead. They are not even looking for liberation. Actually, however, one who engages in Krishna consciousness, liberation is already guaranteed. But still, a devotee is not even aspiring for liberation. He is just aspiring for one thing. Krishna, please engage me in your loving devotional service. Let me not forget your lotus feet. Let me always be conscious of you. Just give me this benediction. Just let me be always in association of devotees. In the Vaikuntha planets, everything is eternally peaceful, yet a pure devotee does not even aspire to be promoted there. But still he gets that advantage. He enjoys all the facilities of material and spiritual world even during his present lifetime. So, Bhagavatam, just like it said, Nashta Prayesho Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Seva, we get calibrated. Day after day, we are getting, so to say, covered by the material energy. Just like day after day, we get dirty, we perspire, we take bath, we get cleansed. Likewise, day after day, unless we hear Bhagavatam, we'll go tangent, we'll go off. We have to understand what's the goal, what we have to aspire for, what is our end result. End result is to come to a state where we just desire the Lord. One time there were <coughs> some Hatha yogis. They had, there was some kind of conclave. They had all assembled by the side of a river. So while they had all assembled, one of them said, let's try to figure out who is the most 
accomplished yogi thereby because yogi is very dear to krishna yogi naam api sarve sham krishna says so yogis are dear to krishna so who is the most accomplished yogi whereby he is dear to the lord he is nearest to the lord now because they were hatha yogis with lord of siddhis and all that they thought that most accomplished yogi means who has more siddhis more you know siddhi powers so while this discussion was on one of the yogi came forward he says i have been doing tapasya meditation for so many years i have the siddhi that i can just walk on water and without waiting for anyone he just got up and started walking by the side there was a river continued walking he walked on the river and then came back so everyone was astonished what a wonderful achievement he can walk on water then another yogi he said this is nothing just see what i can do so he took one uh, twig that datun you have that neem datun the twig he took that he sat on that and started flying and all the people are watching he is going in circles in the sky and then he comes down lands safely so people started discussing hey, this is more than the previous one uh, flying in the sky so then another person said this is nothing he says i because of my siddhi can tell the past present and future so he called one person he says come you come so the person came and he started narrating in detail all what has happened to him in his life his wife name his children name what happened when he got married when he studied where he studied how much marks he got he says is it correct he says yes then he started telling what present problems he is facing he says is it correct yes then he started what's going to happen with him so everyone was astonished that person fell at his feet you are great that what happens when astrologers you know we go and they tell something we feel my god how powerful they are so <clears throat> one person said this is nothing he says i have a siddhi you can light a fire lot of wood were collected and fire was made he went and sat there nothing happened to him the fire was burning he was sitting in that fire and he just walked out of fire unharmed so while this all was going on everyone trying to demonstrate who is greater yogi and who is more accomplished and who is more dearer to the lord a old woman just walked out from that group he says none of you are dear to the lord he says this is not at all pleasing to the lord after all, all these powers we have abilities we have skills we have it's all coming from the lord so she says none of you are dear to the lord so the people became curious and said who is dear to the lord who is the most accomplished yogi he says a person who has annihilated his ego a person who has annihilated the fact thinking that i am great krishna says no kartaham itim aprita gyana kartaham iti manya the things that i am the doer and then she said that is not very easy to achieve this siddhis and all you can achieve very easily relatively speaking it's much easy but to achieve that state of consciousness where one thinks that i am nothing i am the most fallen everything what I have is coming from the lord belongs to the lord he is the real enjoyer to come to that consciousness to annihilate that ego to annihilate that pride to annihilate that ghamand that's not very easy that's why chetana mahaprabhu when he says trinadapi sunichena tarorapi sahisnuna manina manadena we are followers of chetana mahaprabhu actually the achievement what we are aspiring for it's very exalted 
where one actually thinks that he is very fallen, lower than a straw in the street. Somebody tramples, it just gets up. So we also should not aspire, even in devotee communities, many times we fall in trap, some position, some power, some fame. For the service of the Lord, we may get, but that should not be our goal. To facilitate the service of the Lord, we may get some responsibility. But if we get carried away, if we start thinking that I am a big devotee, I am a senior devotee, I am this devotee, that devotee, again, we get into the clutches of Maya. So for devotees, the safe position is he always thinks that he is servant of the 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 Lord and just Lord, always keep me in association of devotees and I get the good fortune of always serving you, life after life. Wherever you want to keep me, you want to embrace me, you want to make me broken hearted, you want to keep me in this material world, you want to take me back to Godhead, you want to give me liberation, that's your choice. I just ask for only one thing and that is just keep me in your service. We'll stop here. Granth Raj, Shrimad Bhagavatam ki, Shila Prabhupada ki.